Hello everyone. My name's Elizabeth Lada Brother and I'm here to talk to you about the new employee competencies. Let's get things started with a quick review of what the competencies are. They're used to recruit, hire, develop through training, and evaluate all local government employees and the classified employees in the school division. So bus drivers, custodians, office associates, etc. Our last set of 12 competencies, eight for all staff, four for supervisors and above, included things like communication, integrity, customer service, and teamwork. Those competencies were developed in 2002, and since then the mission, vision, and values of both divisions have been updated on a regular basis, but the competencies had not. For example, last year local government rolled out its new organizational vision, one organization committed to excellence. Plus, on the local government side, we instituted a new leadership philosophy, leadership at all levels, which encourages all employees to take ownership of their work and exercise leadership in their position. However, our competencies only evaluated leadership skills for supervisors and above. So we clearly needed to take another look at our competencies. Our goals when we started were to make sure that our competencies would be aligned to the mission, vision, and values of both divisions, and we believed that the best process would involve a lot of employee feedback. As we started receiving your feedback, we realized that for a lot of folks, the competencies were difficult to relate to their actual day-to-day -day work, so we added that to our list of goals as well. Another thing we realized during our first round of feedback was that there are a lot of strong feelings out there about the performance evaluation process. We heard you, but it's important that everyone know that a complete overhaul of that process was always way beyond the scope of this group's work. I'll talk more about that piece in a minute. Just so you know who was involved in this process, we had a committee that included staff from all levels of each division. Now, I want to touch briefly on how we got to where we are now. We started with looking at best practices in other localities, schools, and businesses because we didn't want to reinvent the wheel unnecessarily. In March, we asked for and received a great deal of feedback from all of you. Thank you again to everyone who took the time to fill out a survey or participate in a meeting. Your thoughtful responses made our work a lot easier. Once we received all that feedback, we spent most of April digesting it and drafting a new set of competencies, which we sent out for more employee feedback in early May. We did some additional revising based on that feedback and ended up with five competencies. You should have received an email from Lorna Jerome announcing the new competencies, but let's have a quick review of what they are. Community, working together to achieve common goals. Innovation and leadership, Visionary, open to change, considers possibilities. Integrity, professionalism. Learning, development. Stewardship, job skills, knowledge, and ability. The expanded list, complete with bullet points that explain them in more detail, will, is available online and in paper form during your training session. Now that we've got our new competencies in place, we're working with your department on the next piece of the puzzle. Before I get into all that, I also want to let you know that because we have these new competencies, there's a fair amount of HR-related work going on to make sure that the way we recruit, hire, and develop our employees reflects these new competencies. If you're involved in recruiting and hiring within your department, you may notice some changes in the next few months around interview questions, etc. And in the spirit of a high-performing organization, we'll be checking in with departments and employees after they conclude their mid-year conversations to see what questions they have at that point about the competencies. And we'll conduct additional training as needed to help everyone prepare for end-of-year performance evaluations. After our first year with these competencies is complete, we'll do another round of feedback to see what changes and training are needed by our employees. So now, let's talk about what the new competencies mean for you. They'll be used in recruitment and hiring, so they'll help determine who your future coworkers will be. The learning catalog will be built around them, so you'll see some changes there as well. But of course, the thing everybody wants to talk about is how the new competencies will change the performance evaluation process. Overall, the process hasn't changed that much. There's still a five-level rating scale, 
Employees are still expected to set goals for themselves after talking with their supervisors, and the timeline will remain the same. The performance year runs from May to April. You and your supervisor should be having a mid-year conversation to discuss your performance to date and your progress on the goals that you all have set, and you'll still have an end-of-the-year evaluation. Now let's talk about what has changed. For one thing, there's now only one performance evaluation form. Because we now have five competencies rather than eight or 12, you will notice that it is quite a bit shorter. The committee that developed the new competencies also worked with HR to develop the performance standard descriptors, which is a fancy term for the bullet points, for the consistently meets expectations rating level. Here's where the changes start. Rather than creating bullet points and descriptors for all the other rating levels, the Competency Review Committee decided to create guidelines for those levels and asked the departments to work internally to come to an agreement on what it looks like to achieve a rating level of meets and often exceeds expectations or consistently exceeds expectations. You may be wondering why we decided to abandon the bullet points, so let me fill you in on our thinking. When we were conducting all of those meetings to get employee feedback on what they considered to be the qualities and traits of an ideal employee, we also heard a lot about the performance evaluation process. That feedback could be sorted into three main areas of concern. The bullet points are too vague. The bullet points are completely removed from the realities of my day-to-day -day work. And lots of employees didn't have a clear understanding of what the higher rating levels look like or what it takes to achieve a meets and often exceeds or consistently exceeds. Because of these concerns, we decided to tweak the performance evaluation form so that employees could have much more direct input into the definition of these performance standards and rating levels. We'll talk about how you're going to give input into the performance standards conversation in just a minute. First, I want to back up a step and talk about what your responsibilities are as an employee. First of all, you need to make sure that you participate in this process of developing and defining the rating levels. Depending on the size of your department, there may be multiple conversations, so stay involved all the way through. As far as the performance evaluation process itself, those responsibilities are pretty much the same as they have been. Make sure that you are keeping track of your performance. Did you get pulled in to work on a new project? Did someone send you a complimentary email? Have you taken classes to add new skills? Have you mentored a new employee in your department? Did you temporarily assume new responsibilities while a coworker was out? Keep track of what and how you're working so that when it's time for your mid-year and end-of-year conversations, you're able to document all the great stuff you've been doing. Not every department does self-evaluations, but they can be a valuable tool as you prepare for those mid-year and end-of-year conversations. Make sure that you're having an ongoing conversation with your supervisor about your performance, your workload, when you need help, when you're able to offer help to others, or when you see a new opportunity to help others outside your regular work group. And finally, Manage the goals that you and your supervisor have set so that you can achieve them in a timely manner rather than rushing to get them done in April. Now, let's talk about the training and the conversations about performance standards. These sessions are a department-led process with an assist from the Competency Review Committee and HR as needed. Your department has designated one lucky person as the project owner. He or she is in charge of facilitating these sessions and the discussions about the rating levels. This presentation is meant to give you an overview of how we created the new competencies and the resulting changes to the performance evaluation form. Once I finally stop talking, your group will start working through the worksheets that we've created to help your department draft its own agreement on what it looks like to achieve the meets and often exceeds expectations and consistently exceeds expectations rating levels. On behalf of the Competency Review Committee, I want to offer our thanks again to everyone who participated in this process. We appreciate your help and feedback in creating this new set of competencies.